insanely powerful mech suits in movies. On February 25th, 2014, former President Barack Obama jokingly said, Basically, I'm here to announce that we're building Iron Man. <laughs> I'm gonna blast off in a second. This seemed a bit unlikely to a few back then, but today, a company is using exoskeletons for its staff, researchers, and doctors are building exoskeletons to help stroke victims, and there are talks of multiple armies considering their use for combat soldiers. The concept of an exoskeleton has been taken from nature, like the shell of a snail or tortoise. It's hardy, it's tough, and it protects the being inside. Can you imagine how advantageous something of that sort would be to a human? Well, we don't have to imagine because there have been a bunch of great films that have used ravishing and unforgiving exoskeletons and mech suits. The wearers of these high-tech suits have a significant increase in strength, speed, and stamina while reducing the risk of injuries. Some suits have built-in guns and high-octane ammunition, while the others have energy beam cannons and more. In this video, we will take you on a mind-blowing expedition and explore some of the insanely powerful exoskeletons and mech suits used in movies. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Wolverine, 2013, Silver Samurai Armor. Wolverine is devastated by Jean Grey's death at his hand and has not healed from the emotional wound. A young girl comes to meet Logan, representing a Japanese soldier whose life was saved by Wolverine during World War II. She implores him to come with her to meet the dying man, who is also the owner of a huge tech company. Before dying, the war veteran asks Logan to keep his grandfather safe. At the funeral, there is an elaborate attempt to kidnap the young girl, and Logan comes to her rescue. To add to the miseries, we see that Logan's regenerative and healing powers are not at their peak. There's a larger conspiracy at hand here, and Logan finds himself in the midst of the Yakuza, ninjas, and a ruthless killing machine named the Silver Samurai Armor. The crux of this Hugh Jackman starrer lies in the abilities of the Silver Samurai. It was the only way that the villain could further his plans. We will not give any spoilers here and jump straight to one of the most classic armors of the X-Men world. Silver Samurai armor is wholly made of adamantium, which is also one of the strongest metals in the MCU. Wolverine is able to face this adamantium armor as his skeleton is also made of the same alloy. The metal makes the suit highly invulnerable and indestructible, but has a weakness that when hit at the joints, individual pieces can be broken off. Did we tell you that it has enormous samurai swords which can heat up to 3000 degrees Celsius? And these swords are made of adamantium too? Let's not get anywhere close to those blades. The suit has a regenerative life support system that preserves the wearer's body in a cryogenic state and has limited healing powers. The armor, based on an ancient design, has one last trick up its sleeves. Like literally up its sleeves. My legacy must be preserved. Your mistake was to believe that a life without end can have no meaning. It can extract biological material and fluids from a mutant in order to get the mutant's powers. These powers are then gained by the person wearing the silver samurai armor. G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra Delta-6 Accelerator Suit Global Integrated Joint Operating Entity, or G.I. Joe, fight against an evil organization called Cobra in this film by director Steven Summers. General Hawk and Duke are tasked with safeguarding nanotech warheads that have the capability of destroying cities, while Cobra has a detailed plan of taking over the world. Duke will have to rise up and prove that he is the real American hero. Delta-6 Accelerator Suit is a battle armor that enhances and intensifies a soldier's fighting abilities in combat. It gives a pilot heightened speed, strength, and agility. They're worth millions of dollars each. Millions of dollars, go! These mechanical exoskeleton suits have turbo hydraulics at the soldier's feet and knees, which increases the running speed. These pneumatics also help in punching through brick walls and other obstacles. 
It comes loaded with a mini rocket launcher on one wrist and a gun on the other, along with a laser sight for aiming and a six-barreled submachine gun with 10mm rounds. The helmet comes with an integrated computer device that interacts with the pilot to make better strategies and action plans. Channing Tatum, who plays Duke, wears one of these in France. The suit is bulletproof and lightweight. Interestingly, these suits also appear in the Rise of Cobra video game. If you are a G.I. Joe fan, there are plenty of collectibles you can find around you. Edge of Tomorrow, 2014. Combat Jackets. Earth is hit by an unstoppable alien race that no military has been able to beat. In this situation, Major William Cage is thrown in the middle of the front line. But where is the safety? Exactly. <laughs> Cage has no prior experience in combat, and this involuntary mission proves to be his first and last. In the very next moment of his death, Cage somehow comes back to life and finds himself stuck in a time loop. He will have to fight the same battle every day. Fighting, dying, and waking back up to life again and again. Although with each spat, he learns a bit more about his adversaries with the help of Special Forces warrior Rita Brataski, who once shared the same ability, they keep getting closer to winning. Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt star in this alien versus human film, and their only weapon against the extraterrestrials are the very cool combat jackets overflowing with weapons and explosives. Tom and Emily don these metal jackets to run faster, jump to greater heights, and lift and push heavy objects. The suit comes with a digital visor that detects hostiles in the vicinity. These hostiles can be turned to ash using high caliber assault rifles like the SCAR H 7.62 mm triple barrel cannons and grenade launchers. The combat jackets are a thing of beauty if one knows to use them effectively. The suits come in three forms based on their weights. The standard variant is grunt, the lighter one, dog, and the heaviest one, tank. The suit is any soldier's dream, but has a few issues arising due to its weight. And while it does make you faster and deadlier, it doesn't fully protect you, though the tank version has a few metal plates for extra protection. The combat jackets are charged with replaceable batteries, without which the suit doesn't function and the soldier is immobilized. <laughs> Aliens, 1986, Power Loaders. Ellen Ripley wakes up from a 57-year sleep when she is found by a salvage vessel. She is the sole survivor of an alien attack that took place on a moon called LV-426. She is ridiculed for the claim of her discovery of aliens on the moon and learns that the place has now been colonized. Later, when all connections with the crew working on LV-426 are cut off, Ripley must act as a guide and escort for some tougher-than-tough space marines. This time, she plans a full-blown attack on the deadly xenomorphs. The colonial marines in the movie take with them a variety of mounted guns and artillery. These heavy pieces of equipment are loaded on the ship by an equally heavy exoskeletal crane called the P-5000 Powered Work Loader. The power loaders can multiply the pilot's weightlifting capacity by several thousand times allowing one to easily lift weights up to a few thousand kilograms. The mech tool's arms work on the principle of hydraulics, and the ordinance is manipulated by a joystick. Get away from her, you bitch! James Cameron paid great attention to detail when he featured this highly efficient piece of machinery in the movie. It is based on the principles of physics and is not some mindless human crank. A fully weaponized version of the P-5000 was supposed to appear in the 2013 PlayStation and Xbox game Aliens Colonial Marines, but it could never see the light of day. James Cameron's Aliens is a classic film, and the P-5000 has the luxury of being a part of that legacy. One can find many toys, figurines, and collectibles of the dexterous machine, and we hope you find one too. Elysium, 2013, The Exosuit. It's 2154 and the world is in a dystopian state. The wealthy live in a space station called Elysium with all amenities and resources while the poor reside on a desolate Earth. 
There is a stark division between the rich and the poor. Secretary Delacorte is a government official who is hell-bent on making the immigration laws stricter for the impoverished while also planning a coup against the government. Max da Costa is an ex-con who works in unhealthy conditions. He comes in contact with a chemical that will kill him in a matter of days unless he goes to Elysium and uses the high-tech medical facilities there. This path is filled with obstacles and an entire society will work against him. Matt Damon plays Max, who gets himself implanted with an exoskeleton that will give him the power of a droid. The exoskeleton provides power and speed with which he fights the numerous robots and agents that are sent to kill him. The most thing is that the exoskeleton is partially based on the development by Exobionics and Lockheed Martin called the Human Universal Load Carrier or HULC, pronounced like Hulk. These were designed for military use in real-world situations. Matt's exoskeleton is a more advanced form of Hulk, with arm braces and supports for the spine and chest. It also has a certain connection with the brain by the use of a chip. This is an incredibly relatable and realistic mechanized bodysuit, something that doesn't feel like elevated science fiction, but an enhanced technology that's achievable in the near future. Avatar 2009, Amplified Mobility Platform. Paraplegic Marine Jake Sully takes his brother's place in a mission to the distant planet of Pandora. There, he falls in love with a Navi named Nitiri. However, the mission he is on is dangerous to the aliens. Jake will have to make a tough decision and decide if he wants to fight a battle that will change the way history will be written. The humans use Amplified Mobility Platforms, or AMPs. These are military exoskeletons that were designed for defense and patrolling. In the assault on the Tree of Souls, the AMP suits are seen in their fullest glory. Like other similar suits, this one gives the operator highly increased strength and mobility as well as protection from environmental and weapon threats. You think you're one of them? Time to wake up. But let us not forget that Avatar was a James Cameron film and there's going to be more with anything that we can see on the screen. The AMPs are intelligently made suits that mimic the pilot's hands and leg movements while also letting the operator know when it runs into an obstacle. It is almost as if the suit and its operator feel each other. The armor is 4 meters high, but is still very agile, possessing extremely dexterous hands that allow it to perform the same functions as an infantry soldier. It also dons multiple weapon systems, like a 3-foot-long knife and a 30mm hip-fired autocannon that can fire 250 armor-piercing rounds per minute. Avatar comes abundant with visually striking scenes, and this gargantuan soldier-like kill machine justifies the film. Matrix Revolutions 2003, Armored Personnel Unit, aka APU. Zion is preparing for an upcoming war, but the chances of survival and winning are slim. Neo is captured by the Merovingian, and Neo's team makes a plan to extract him back. It is believed that Neo is, in fact, the one who will ultimately end the war between humans and the machines. Although there is a larger threat looming, it comes from someone who is planning on destroying both worlds. The Wachowskis gave us this cult classic science fiction film with powerful and dynamic action sequences. Humans use machines to fight machines. Therefore, it becomes imperative that we introduce you to the Armored Personnel Unit, or the APU, that was designed as a combat mech suit using hydraulic principles. This suit has 30mm rapid-fire cannons attached to each arm. At a looming 14 feet, this killing machine was used to defend Zion from hordes of sentinels. The APU is a lightweight battle exoskeleton that the pilot fully controls. The 30mm armament fires continuously and shreds robots to pieces. The targeting system is manual and is not controlled by a screen or a joystick, giving the pilot more independence and autonomy when battling in close combat. The APU lacks much defense as it was predominantly designed to be on the offensive side. If we look closely, it seems like the power loader utility exoskeleton from Aliens of 1986 is the predecessor to APUs, and the AMP suits from Avatar were its successors. Ah! 
District 9, 2009, the Mech Prawn. Aliens come to Earth on a massive spaceship in 1982. They land in Johannesburg, South Africa, but not with the intention of invading the Earth or killing its human population. They've come because their home planet is now dying and they seek refuge. They were welcomed by humans and were placed in what is now called District 9. 28 years later, these aliens, nicknamed Prongs, are confined and exploited by Multinational United for their technology. The refugee camp of District 9 has become converted into a militarized ghetto. Wykus van der Merve, an operative in the Multinational United, is exposed to an alien chemical and is now dependent on the Prongs for survival. The prawns use a highly mechanized bio-armor for a range of purposes. These suits can help the wearer attack, defend, construct buildings, and repair ships. The suit boasts a range of arsenal and ammunition for attacking hostiles, such as rocket launchers, a machine gun, an advanced rifle cartridge laser, and a metal spike that explodes enemies with electricity. When the hostiles have been eliminated, the suit presents itself as a defensive barrier for the host. The autopilot mode comes in handy when the host is injured or preoccupied. One unique feature about the suit is that it can only be used by someone who has the prawn DNA in them. In one of the scenes, the suit launches a telekinetic field that absorbs and controls all incoming bullets and ammo. When the field becomes strong enough, all these incoming bullets were fired from midair back at the hostiles with great accuracy. This sweet piece of alien technology is a deadly nightmare if you're the bad guy. I am the Giver. The Giver, 1991. Bio Armor. Dr. Tetsu Sagawa is a researcher for a company called the Kronos Corporation, who is murdered after he steals an alien device from them called the Giver. Sean Baker, the boyfriend of Dr. Sagawa's daughter, finds the Giver's hiding spot and fuses with it, turning into a cyborg. It turns out that the Kronos Corporation is actually an organization run by the Zoonoids, mutated creatures that are not completely human. The Zoonoids will stop at nothing to get the Giver back, while Sean discovers a dark secret about the intentions of Kronos. Bio-armors, or Giver units, are multifunctional suits that provide extraordinary resilience by enhancing the host's body's physical features to reach its full biological, physical, and genetic potential. This is done through rearranging and changing the organs, increasing blood oxygen levels and improving the metabolism of the host. They are also semi-sentient, which means that if a host cannot defend themselves, the Giver units take charge and fight back. The bio-boosted armor's primary ability is biological enhancement, and that comes in a variety of ways. The host gets superhuman levels of speed, stamina, strength, and reflexes. The accelerated healing and regenerative power takes care of injuries. Weapons include strong sound wave vibrations that can shatter enemy weapons into molecules, an infrared laser of pure heat energy, and a particle beam cannon launched from the chest. These suits don't come with any external attachments, but they do something better. They turn the host and their body parts into ultimate weapons. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.